Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. The state's actually doing 50 million more of relief on the property tax. You might be going through some sticker shock as tax assessments are being mailed out in Cass County. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum told us earlier this year the state was actually doing more for property tax relief. We told you this was coming, but if lawmakers are helping us out more, why are we paying more? Our investigation finds out what we were really being told doesn't seem to be translating into our bank accounts. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric is here with details. Bradford? Mike, Andrea, Governor Burgum signed a bill that received wide support on both sides of the aisle this session. It threw out a 12% property tax rebate from the state, and the state took up funding county social service programs. But that also meant counties could not tax for those services anymore, removing those funds from the breakdown on your tax statements. So lower taxes, right? Well, not exactly. And what's happening now, just like we told you it would, is an average of 8 to 9% tax increases across the board. This tax breakdown sent to us by a resident of the Woodhaven neighborhood shows a 16% increase in what they owe for next year. Other residents in the area tell me they've seen their bills go up by $300. Another man said over $600 for next year. It's not only frustrating, it's just plain confusing. So I, I don't understand how to translate it. I know that a couple years ago people were quite frust frustrated that the one thing is obviously mills because I'm not an accountant, I'm not a public serv uh, service person who understand these mills because usually they're being increased. There's another part to this too. Remember we told you before about Cass County using new software to assess property, meaning if you're seeing a drastic increase, it could be due to the county now putting your value in line with where it should have been all along. The City of Fargo Assessor's Office takes a portion of the city each year, inspecting each property there and then crunching the numbers to determine their value estimates. So again, your property could be going up in value if it's to be inspected this year. So are property taxes lower? Well, maybe, but that doesn't seem to be translating to what we're all paying this biennium. Mike? All right, thanks, Bradford. If you want to contest these taxes, you're going to have to do some legwork on your own. There's actually four different entities involved, meaning you have to go to four different hearings. The dates and the times are on your screen. We'll have more information about them online. They start early in September and they're going to run through the end of the month. Authorities are now saying a farmstead near where Savannah Graywind's body was found is no longer considered a crime scene. Her body was wrapped in plastic and discovered in the river near Harwood, close to that farm. Fargo police say they are still actively pursuing all leads and options to determine where the murder took place. Meanwhile, Savannah Graywind's death has the community heartbroken. People around the world are interested in hearing about the baby girl everyone assumes is Savannah's. Graywind's mom and dad, along with her boyfriend, are now able to see the baby girl, Hazley Jo. She's healthy and we're told looks just like Savannah. As of today, they haven't heard when the baby will be released to family. The family is currently working on funeral plans. The Ramsey County Medical Examiner tells us Graywind's body can be released once the family chooses a funeral home. They are also asking that if you want to donate, do so on their U.S. bank fund named Hazley Joe. Fraud fundraisers have been a major issue for the family. A North Dakota man will spend 15 years in federal prison for production of child pornography. 28-year-old Justin Wiley pleaded guilty to one count of production of child porn in November. Now he's in more trouble after investigators found child porn files being shared from his computer. More than 7,000 suspected child pornography images and 102 suspected child porn videos were recovered from Wiley's computer. A Moorhead, man is, uh, a Moorhead man facing four felony child abuse charges is now requesting a trial. 31-year-old Sean Foltz requested a jury trial Thursday in Clay County District Court. Court documents state police were first alerted to the case back in May when a two-month-old child was brought to the hospital with bruises and marks on several places of her body. During the investigation, Foltz told police that he rubbed hot sauce in the child's eyes, snapped her in the face with a towel, and would think of ways to hurt the child while he was at work. He's facing two assault charges, along with charges of child neglect or endangerment and malicious punishment of a child. A trial date has not been set. 
Wind speeds picked up today. You could feel that the temps cooled down a bit. Let's find out from Justin about tonight's conditions. Justin. Yeah, thank you, Andrea and Mike, and good evening, everybody. Yeah, we had plenty of sunshine today. Just a little bit of smoke out there. Temperature slightly below normal for this time of year. We're holding at 74 degrees into the Fargo area. A little cooler into Lakes Country, Detroit Lakes at 68, Wadena and Bemidji at 66, but we're well into the 70s as make your way out toward Jamestown and at Devil's Lake. So planning your night for the night tonight, mainly clear sky. It will be a nice warm evening, 73 in the 7 o'clock hour. Temperatures falling to near 70 by 8, then into the upper 60s. Still pretty warm for this time of year as we go into the 9 o'clock hour. Taking a look at the satellite loop. Now we are seeing some passing clouds out toward the Jamestown area, the Devil's Lake area. Everybody else is clear right now. Increasing clouds as you make your way across into western North Dakota with some showers and thunderstorms on the Montana border. Some of them We'll get into our viewing area as we go through the day tomorrow. And then taking a look at the seven day forecast, you're gonna love what you see. Plenty of sunshine out there and warm air for the weekend. We'll have the details later in the newscast. All right, thanks, Justin. A man has pleaded not guilty to several charges relating to a standoff with police. Tate Smith Nerlene of Fargo was arrested in early August for refusing to come out of a house in North Fargo. A woman that was in the home before the incident says she believes Smith Nerlene was suffering possibly from a mental illness and drug abuse. His charges include aggravated assault and terrorizing. The superintendent of Northern Cass School has pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor DUI charge. After the plea, a judge ruled that Corey Steiner must pay a $1,000 fine and be placed on 360 days probation. He must also do 20 hours of community service. Steiner was pulled over near Mapleton August 12th and had a blood alcohol level that was twice the legal limit. Steiner is currently one of the administrators being tasked with filling the duties of principal at Northern Cass School after former principal Ryan Lyson was fired earlier in August. The school board has said that sanctions are possible for Steiner once the case is resolved. President Donald Trump is coming to North Dakota. He's going to be in Mandan next week to make a pitch for tax reform. According to Congressman Kevin Kramer, the president is expected to visit the Tesoro refinery in Mandan on Wednesday. About 500 people have been invited to hear the president speak, and Valley News Live will be there to provide coverage of the president's visit to North Dakota. Now, today's announcement came shortly after we found out that a North Dakota company out of Dickinson is one of four contractors chosen to create concrete prototypes of the wall that the president wants to build along the border between the U.S. and Mexico. If you want details on this prototype, we've got them posted on our website at valleynewslive.com. We are just two days away from the first NDSU Bison football game of the season, and fans are packing the parking lot of the Shields off of 45th Street in Fargo for the Bison Block Party. Valley News Live is the place for all your Bison coverage, and Valley News Team's Hutch Johnson and Beth Houle are out there taking part in all the fun. Let's go to Hutch first. Hutch, can you feel the thunder out there? Hey, I got to tell you, the weather's perfect out here. As we close out the summer season, we're getting ready for bison season. Horns up. Make sure you get out here. This is the Shields. Horns up, man. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. Now, they've got all kinds of good activities for the family out here. I uh, have been eyeing the bouncy house, but Beth... You've been keeping your eyes on that riding bull mechanical thing right that, over here. That's right, a mechanical bull, you guys. I'm going to try and give it my eight seconds, see if I can compete. It looks like a pretty good champ on there right now, though. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. You got the front fenders here uh, providing music. and. That's just... right. And Coach Kleiman going to be on his way as well tonight. He's going to be here. They're expecting him about 6.30. So after you wrap up the newscast, head on out. You can hear words from Coach Kleiman about the season and, and kicking off on Friday night. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the season. It's that time of year again, whether we like it or not. And everybody's excited. The turnout here, very impressive. That's right. I'm so excited I'm trying to move that game up. They're actually kicking off Saturday, of course, at 2.30. <laughs> that one's, I better know that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. On, on KVLI. You know what, though? It's been a busy day in Fargo-Moorhead yes, today, yes. especially as Matt Poland brings this Stanley Cup back to KVLI live on TV. I do it. <laughs> uh, we're, that's right. We're, we kicked off the, uh, the coverage with Stanley Cup. Uh, Matt Poland bringing it back. Started off at the Sanford Children's Hospital today, uh, taking it to some kids, sharing it at the Coley's Kids Cabin, something that his foundation uh, donated $100 million to to be able to uh, give kids a little bit of excitement and relaxation during their hard fights. 
Uh, and, and they shared some donuts, shared some donuts with the media as yeah. well. Headed over to Newman Outdoor Field where they threw out the first pitch and then on over into Moorhead for that uh, Moorhead Dairy Queen. Oh, yeah. Where they were able to uh, enjoy a little bit of ice cream and share the cup with the public. And, you know, this is Matt's third time winning the Stanley Cup, his third time bringing it back to Fargo Moorhead. But he says every time it's been special and you really can't compare them. Well, it might be the first time. <laughs> might be the I don't know that you can compare any of them. It's just, you know, every time is unique and, you, you know, you try to, if you can share it and, and make an impact on somebody and um, brighten their day, I think that's kind of cool. But it's just fun to see how people respond to the cup. It's such a special, uh, special thing and uh, fun to see how they react and a lot of big smiles. share the cup with all of his fans uh, he said that he'd like nothing more now though than to bring it back a fourth time and be able to uh, share it as a Minnesota one we'll hear about that coming up in sports we've got plenty more coming up uh, we're gonna continue to enjoy ourselves out here though. there's no question about that yeah I'll tell you what, I wonder if Matt had some ice cream in that cup today he did I can confirm he did eat ice cream out of the Stanley Cup and donuts and fruit loops it's all been right. a busy day very good back to the studio all right, thanks, gang. The Bison open their season Saturday at the Fargo Dome. It's a 2.30 kickoff against Mississippi Valley State. Join us at 1.30 for our Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show with full game coverage statewide to follow. Police enjoy squealers when it comes to solving crimes, right? But a recent squad car passenger really brought home the bacon. That story still to come on Valley News Live at 6. Plenty of sunshine today, a high temperature of 76, a couple of degrees below our normal high of 78. We're tracking some possible severe weather for tomorrow, a very nice weekend ahead. Details coming up.